Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, even we, we raise a hallelujah. We say hallelujah, hallelujah to you. Father, Lord God Almighty, we fight battles just by praising you, just by magnifying you. And we want to thank you again, Lord God Almighty. Ah, where would we be? There was no word of God. Where would we be, oh God, without the Bible? We want to thank you, Father Lord God Almighty, for preserving your word. We want to thank you, Holy Spirit, for writing them in our heart of hearts, for bringing them to our remembrance at every opportune moment. Lord, this is another session of our practical Christianity. Father, Lord God Almighty, we invite you. We will never, never, never have the, have the audacity to move before you, to go before you, Lord God Almighty. You are the one that goes before your people. You are the rear guard. You are the one that surrounds us with your loving kindness. And so we thank you because we know you are not invisible to us. You are right here with us sharing with us because you are Emmanuel, you are the God that is Jehovah Shammah, the one who is always there, the one who watches over us, the one who sees us, El Roa is your name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for another wonderful time of fellowship, wonderful time of refreshing, oh God, even in your presence. Let your name, as always, in healing wings, be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I thank God for those of us that are already here. Uh, as I said in prayer, this is another session of our practical Christianity. And um, it's more of a discussion time than searching the scriptures, but I want to use two or three scriptures as the backdrop of our discussion today. Uh, because we will, we will be looking really at the, the devices of the devil, the strategies that the devil uses against us. The first one I want us to look at, simply an admonition that comes from Ephesians 4.27. Ephesians 4.27 says, do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give the devil a foothold. And so we're going to discuss today ways where we wittingly or unwittingly give the devil a foothold. Um, the second one is 2 Corinthians 2.11. 2 and 2 Corinthians says, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So our discussion today is to ensure that we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We want to make sure we are not ignorant. God does not want us to be ignorant. Definitely not about the devices of the devil. Last but not the least, is Job 2, 4. So Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. All that a man has, he will give for his life. Let me start with Festus. Festus, are you here? Give a shout out if you are. Yes, I'm here, sir. Okay. What does the devil regard as the life of a man? He said, all that a man has, he will give for his life. What does the devil 
regard as the life of a man? Um, those um, actions that are uh, external, things that uh, family, your wealth, uh, your, your, your outer body, that is yourself, those are the things you regard that you will give all, but not your soul. Forget about the scripture. I'm not asking you about the scripture now. I say, what does he regard as the life of a man? We can answer me in one sentence. The life of a man is what, according to the devil? This is in his, his, uh, his, his inheritance as an opposition. The man, the man is his possessions. Okay? Mm. They are his possessions. Okay, all right. Let me ask somebody else. Let's see if we will find uh, uh, some kind of unanimity. Samukwa, what does the devil regard of a man? in the background, please. Sorry? I see the noise coming from your background. It's a recorded session. Oh, you're hearing all kinds of noise in your background. Always make sure that is not there. I don't know whether that is the wind or the sound of. That's the sound of Christine, not the wind. Oh. Okay, Christine is talking to Matachi. Yeah, ah. you should not be, you should not allow such things to interfere with the recordings. Please. Okay, we are being recorded. I'm sorry about that. Um, now, what does the devil consider to be a man's life? Yes, as, as, uh, First of said, the first thing that entered my mind was a man's possessions, you know, material property, the things that uh, a man would, would feel attached to, have, perhaps having put some effort into acquiring them. Okay, sorry. thank you. Uh, let me seek the third opinion. Uh, Stephen Ipalibo Lawson, are you with well, us? I, I'm in alignment with uh, Sam and uh, speak uh, on regards to the speak your own. Speak your own. Well, I think it is is in his, the man's possession. That is what it con that constitutes. He believes uh, the man's possessions uh, constitute his life. Uh, yes, the man's possession to constitute his life. Okay. Um, thank you. Let me see. What does God uh, let, 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 Okay. Let, let me start by saying, you know, I, I don't agree with any of the answers that I've given, you know, because... Um, Neither do I. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know why, why they're saying that, because, you know, you cannot kill a man's possessions, and you can kill, you know, the life of a man can be killed. Uh, so it cannot be his possessions. Uh, but yeah, it, I thought it was like that, your that, money that, or your life thing. Pardon? I thought it was like a, your, your money or your life thing. You know, when somebody comes yes. to you and puts a gun to your head, that's what I thought. Yes, definitely, definitely. The devil regards a man's body as his life. Uh, you know, okay. What does God, let me see, my question to you. So let, 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 let's, let's understand that. I mean, you know, it is the man's body that the devil regards as his life. You can't kill his possessions. If you kill him, he's dead. Um, what does God regard as the life of a man? His spiritual life, his, his spirit. His spirit. How do you kill his spirit? You can't. But life can be killed. Well, 
it's it's just here that I'm thinking about it. Mm, that's the whole point of this exercise. Yeah, that even though he says, um, so in essence, what he's what the devil is actually saying is that let me, I want to take his life, but then God says no, you can't. You can take everything else, but you can't kill him. That's, that's not what God says. God says, go ahead. Uh, let's go back to this. He said, he said, go ahead. Yes, he says, go ahead. So you can have it. Um, uh, you see, they're talking as cross purposes. Okay. So let's go back. So from verse 4. So Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes. All that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and it will surely curse you to your face. So you already find that Satan himself already defined here that his life is in his bone and his flesh. And the Lord said to, to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So God said, You can touch his bone and his flesh, but you cannot take his life. So they have. We have two contrasting definitions of life. Satan says the life of the man that he will defend to the teeth. It's not as if Satan doesn't know God's definition of life. Huh? Satan says the life of a man that man will fight tooth and nail huh, to defend is his body, his flesh, and his bones. And God says, go ahead, deal with his body, but don't take his life. God is talking about another life. Let me see, do you know what the life God is talking about? Say, is this his spirit? No, I'm not sure that is it. Uh, let me pose the question to Benedict Alibe. The devil says, the life of a man is his flesh. Hello? The life of a man. Yes. Um, in case of Job, I think we're talking about the physical life. Case of Job, case of man. Man, we're talking about the physical life. Not considered to be the life of a man. A physical life that is life of flesh. No, 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 no. God does not have, God cannot have the same perspective of the devil. Uh, he cannot have the same perspective of the devil. Is anybody that we haven't asked, okay, we can go around again because we haven't asked the second question to them. I, Balibo, can you tell us what God considers to be the life of a man? Stephen Lawson, are you here? Uh, nothing comes to mind right now, sir. Okay, let me give you a clue. What does Jesus come to save? What does Jesus come to save? He comes to save us from sin. No, what, 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 not save us from? What does he come to save? He comes to save our what? Uh, it comes to save our lives. Oh my God! <laughs> this clue is too is too obvious. <laughs> okay, Balibo, you are not in the zone yet. You know, maybe you just finished eating this or Father Yap. you are usually a lot more spiritual than than than, than this. Yes, Sawuka. What Jesus is the savior of our. <clears throat> Jesus is the savior. Of, Jesus is the savior of our souls. Thank you. Is the savior. Of, okay. So now, <laughs> the man's life, according to God, breathed on man, and man became a living soul. Now, the man's life, according to the devil, is his body. Is in his body. Okay. And he is going to today. We are looking at the strategies and devices of the devil, and so the devil. Is going to convince you. Hmm? It's going to try to convince you. And uh, part of the reason why we're talking today is that 
he might have convinced you to a very, very large extent. You know, I mean, different degrees, different people, some people 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, some people 100%. He might have convinced you that your life is in your body. Huh? But God mm -hmm, says your life is in your soul. Okay? So um, the, the, I've, I've had to think a lot more about this recently in light of what is happening in Ukraine. Because I say, you know, all these people are... I are getting bombed, they're getting killed. It's happening in Nigeria, people are getting killed. And what is God looking at? Huh? God is primarily concerned about their soul. So, but a lot of the time, we are so wrapped up in the body. Huh? We are so concerned about the body. And we want to invite God also to be so concerned about the body. But uh, God's primary concern is with the soul. God's primary concern is with the soul. So what is more important? Test us. Uh, I can't see him again. It seems to have disappeared. Dr. is your system working? Are we going to have another palaver with you today? It's working, sir. Okay, we have to speak louder, though. You always seem sound far away. What is more important, your body or your soul? And why? Did you hear the question or we have to wait another five minutes? I did ask you if your system was working. I think I'm going to have to go to someone else. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, today, just listen again until you get a, a, a phone. Uh, let me see. What is more important? your body or your soul, and why? Well, it could be because yeah, of the price I, like you say, it could be because. Which one is more important to start with? Oh, okay, okay. so the soul is more important. Okay. And because the uh, 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 Jesus paid the price for our souls, he didn't pay the price for our bodies. So it's... That's, not, that's not an answer. Yeah, why did they? Okay. <laughs> you know, they the body, but the soul and not the body. That's what you have to tell me. <laughs> you can't just use Jesus as, as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, the, the body is going to die. It's 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 um it's condemned to death because of sin. So, um. What is what is going to what is redeemed is not yeah, our right. body. You could have saved it. Yeah, but let me go. <laughs> okay, go. Um, so uh, yeah, well, so because of that, the fact that well, he could, but he didn't. So for for God's own reasons, it yeah, is. But I want to know why, why, why you didn't. Okay. Why yeah. you say why? Because, because the body would die. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah, so um, because he 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 condemned also the flesh, didn't he? What what is that passage that says that he um, so life in the flesh is not God's what God what Jesus came to redeem? It was our um, our soul. So let me make the question more difficult for you, so you won't you won't be able to run away. Okay. What is the soul of a man? Hmm. The soul of the man is his consciousness plus his spirit. <laughs> <laughs> the soul of a man is not his spirit. I can I can wriggle any way you hold me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you already you already educated us from the beginning because you made a difference. One, the body uh, is mortal. The soul of a man is immortal. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, is the mortal part of the man. 
all right? It's a, it's a part of, by, by which we reason now, the part by which we think. Uh, this is a part that is going to remain after the body has died. It is a part that animates the body now. It is a part that activates the body now, but it doesn't need the body to operate. Uh, it can act independently of the body. So when a man dies, his soul doesn't die, okay? So his soul, his soul <laughs> is still alive, okay? His soul is still alive. So, um, well, I can pose the same question to GMC because she seems to know the answer, you know, I mean, um, is Jesus a savior of the soul or a savior of the body? He's a savior of the soul. Okay, but which body is Jesus a savior of? That's the, the body that he, the body that his own body. Explain that oh. to me. What does that mean? How is Jesus the savior of his own body? What is Jesus's own body? His own body is, is, is what is called the church. Thank, and thank you. That's fantastic. Okay, you have, you, have, you have really helped us. All right. So there is the body of Christ, which includes all of us that are here. Huh? Jesus is the savior of that body of Christ. Hmm? But he is not the savior of the body of man. He is the savior of the soul of man. Uh, let me see, thank God. Thank God. Um, um, let me go to Festus. Yes, sir. Festus, can you beat a child to death? No. Why do you say no? Oh, okay. Um. Can be the child to death. Can the parent mistakenly flog, beat, beat, beat the child? You know, and beat the child to death. No, no. Yes, you said you told me no. I want to know the reason. Why you say no? Because um why I say no is um uh, as far as is uh is 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 your child uh and it's from it's also from you, uh there is that um there is that relationship that will not warrant you kill the child physically. <laughs> I don't know about that. I thought you were saying something else initially. Okay, <laughs> first us, can a man kill another man? Yes, by well, killing people, why not? Uh, okay. Thank you. Let me ask somebody else. Uh, Samukwa, can a man kill another man? Uh, as far as it has to do with, uh, uh, as far as it has to do with. Just, just my simple question. Can a man kill another man? Not as far as anything. Can a man kill another man? Yes or no? And then you give me the reason. I would say, <clears throat> I would say yes and no. Well, we cannot, reason... say no, we cannot say yes and no in this in this in this context. <laughs> yes, you are, uh, you, you are standing in two positions. A double-minded man. <laughs> you can't. I need a yes oh. or a no from you. Can a man kill another man? In well, on the face value, yes. But I know it goes further than that. On the face value, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, let me ask uh, Benedict Alibe. Can a man kill another man? 
There is no noise from Sam's place. I don't know why. Hellos? Yes, Benedict. Can a man kill another man? No. Why not? Because man can only kill flesh, cannot kill soul. Thank you. And Simple straightforward. Man can only kill the flesh. He can only kill the soul. Um, Benedict, let's 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 take it a little bit further. Is What's is Jesus obligated to protect the body of a believer? No. Why do you say no? Because he's here because of the soul. Okay. Because if, if, he's doing, if, of the soul, if he's doing, if he's of the soul, not the body. If he's doing that, you're doing it for like a favor. You don't have an obligation to do so. Let me ask you, uh, did Jesus save the body of John the Baptist? No. Only save the soul. But it was top, yes, it was top, top. Okay, so he only saved the soul of John the Baptist. All right, uh, Benedict, thank you. Uh, let's proceed. The parable of Equalibo lost. Are you here? Let me pose the question to Yemi. Um, let me see. How does the devil make us choose the body in preference for the soul? Not by convincing us that um, there's there's not we we don't really know about you know what happens when you die. So you better just. Yeah, but you don't know exactly us, Sorry. It's not as if the devil takes us to some morning Bible study or something. So, <laughs> you know, so what is the mechanism that he uses to make us prefer the body? Well, the because there's a lot of emphasis, the same way he would he told Jesus, Oh, I will I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. So there must have been some presentation of that kingdom that represented temptation for Jesus. Otherwise, I mean, why bother? So there is a way yeah, in- You are not answering my question. Mm, okay. I'm just saying that. There are mechanisms that he uses to make us prefer the body to the soul. What are some of those mechanisms? I don't know the pride of life. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to tell us it directly. I mean, you know, if I mean, he it was advantage of our own desires. So confident, he says, "Skin for skin, all that a man has, he will give for his life." So he says, "A man will give everything he has to protect his body." Why is he so confident? I have no idea because it's not even true. Because be aware of the strategies of the devil. That's why we're having this discussion. We must not be ignorant of his devices. And okay, Amara is here. You haven't asked her anything yet. Okay, you know, I mean, sometimes she uses her own laptop as she did during the prayer meeting. Uh, uh, or sometimes, how do I know she's here? Sometimes when I when I call her, you say she's she's uh, having music lesson. <laughs> the whole thing is confusing. She should use her laptop so I can see her on the screen. Uh, so I must. Uh, uh, 
Okay, uh, Amara, what are some of the, the ways that the devil uh, tries to convince us that our body is the most important part of us, and our body is our life? Mm -hmm. Good evening. Maybe fear. He does what? Using fears. Okay, how does he use fear? If you're, you're too busy thinking about how afraid you are about losing your life, then you forget about what has been done in order, in order for you to continue living beyond the flesh. Let us use Job to try and understand the situation, okay? The devil wants to attack Job. And he says, in effect, that Job is going to deny God. So what does the devil do? He takes away his children. He, he, he takes away his children and people turn against his opinions. His, his friends will not support him. He, he, he kills his children and then he attacks his body. So the devil will use what to make us be to express preference for the protection of our body. What will he use? Death and sickness. Pardon? You started death by telling us that. The fear of death. He will use the fear of death. Now, now so what he does is this. In different situations, uh, he will pose certain questions to us. If I pose it directly, or he might pose it spiritually. Uh, he will ask you, you either die or you do something else. So I, I put it this way. He will tell you your body or your soul. Oh. Uh, he will present it to you. I mean, you might not know that that is what he is doing, but it is what he's doing, as you will find out as we go on in this discussion. He will give you an ultimatum, your body or your soul. Now, Amara, why is he so confident that we will choose our body and not our soul? Maybe because body is what you can see or what you know, but you can't see your soul. So precisely, you. precisely. You have to speak louder because so that everybody hears you. Now, yeah, thank you. That, that's precisely it. Because most of us don't even know we have a soul. <laughs> okay. Uh, a lot of the things that we, that we, we have, we can see them. Uh, we are so rich, but we can't see our riches. We can't see our soul, but we can see our body. So he relies on the fact that many people, or most people, are completely ignorant of their soul. OK? So if I were to ask the question, well, why do men prepare prefer their body to their soul, it is because they don't know their soul even exists. They can't see their soul. Thank you, Yamara. Samukwa, why did Esau prefer his body to his birthright? <laughs> his his hunger was very very real 
he could feel it in his body. The concept, he couldn't see it. So he, so he couldn't actually uh, um, assess the value of the right at the time, because what was very real to him, which he felt in his body. So I I believe that was why he preferred. You, you said, you said he, 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 he couldn't assess the value of his birthright at the time. But could he, he assess it at some time? He could not. Did there, did there come a time when he realized the value of his birthright? Mm, yes. What time was that? Your system again, no. Your voice is breaking. Well, I'll find this. You were, you were breaking. Can you hear me? We couldn't hear you before, but I hope we can hear you now. We have uh, Okay. Okay. I can to, hear you now. You to, I was no, uh, Sam, Sam, you know something. Hmm? Wisdom is profitable for direction. You need to you need to get some part of your house, right? Where you can get this thing to work properly. And then only use that when you come here. You don't seem to do it. You seem to uh, to a place that didn't work before, and then we have this ding dong again, and then we start looking. We start looking for where do you get, you know? But there must be some part of your house. Yes, I, uh, I do get. I get better service in the in the studio, but unfortunately, uh, there's no nepa at the moment, and everywhere is so hot. I can't. I can't stay you in this to, You have to choose between the heat and the service. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I, I'll work something out. We can hear you now, so I don't know where you are now. Actually, I'm outside the house. I'm okay, sitting in front of the house. Is, maybe it is outside that you're going to be doing these sessions <laughs> with us so that we don't, have, we don't keep having this, because this has been occurring quite often now. It wasn't so before. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you were talking about uh, ISO. Yeah. At, so, at what that, juncture did he come to value his birthright? After he had lost it. After uh, 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 his father. Sorry? He lost it a long time before he realized the value. Yes, yeah, well, after he had lost it. When did he realize he had lost it? Hmm. Well, number one, I think it was, I think it, I think it was uh, when he came for his father's blessings and discovered that his younger brother had gotten there before him by deception, I think. Okay. So... There are some things that are valuable, but don't seem valuable to us now. But we will realize their value much later on. Is that right? That, that is true. That was the case with his birthright. That is true. OK, so Samukwa, what is your birthright? My birthright is sonship of God. The birthright that I have. You are a son of God. Yes, that I have uh, a privilege I have been granted. And you know, son by, of God. By God. Okay. What can you do with that birthright now? What are the practical values 
you will say, excuse my English. I don't even know whether that is correct English. What are the okay. practical values of your birthright now? Well, I can, I can inform other people of the advantages that have accrued to me as a result of that mm -hmm. birthright. I'm asking you, what are the advantages that have accrued to you? Not <laughs> oh, what, oh. what I'm asking you. Oh, mm -hmm. the, adv ah, the advantages accrued to me now. Are, mm. One, first of all, assurance of a relationship with God. That's one. Two, the fact that the fact that that relationship gives me confidence to be able to overlook certain things that are happening around me because i know from the words that he has revealed he is always around he's always in charge you know and i also know that as far as you know as far as my soul is concerned, he's very much he's very much concerned about that, about what happens to me. And so he takes an interest in the things that I get involved in. So when I discuss when I bring certain things before him, he, he grants me guidance which I would not have gotten otherwise. He he gives me guidance, prevents me from making blunders, sometimes allows me to make blunders so that I can learn, you know, which a, I think a good mentor would do sometimes. But he is a father to me, which is above everything else. That, that's the privilege of that relationship is are some of the benefits that I find you know, he, sometimes he, he sorts out issues for me, even without my asking, you know? And so I have the confidence that whatever he says always will always come to pass. So whatever he says about me is what is, is the reality of my life. And I'm the only person who can change change that or mess it up. So that that makes me that makes me feel confident that the things that uh, have been laid before me to do, that he will ensure that I do it. To you know to to be to be able to fulfill that which he would want me to do. So I'm, that confidence is there. So one doesn't have fears, regardless of what we see around us. All right, okay, Sam, thank you. Okay, this, this question is for Amara. Is she still around? Hello, yes. Okay, Amara, do, do, you, do you know the song say, that says, my papa no be dangote. Oh, like you know that song? <laughs> Have you heard the song before? A little bit. Okay. What what uh, what is the advantage of the son of Dangote relative to the advantage in being the son of God? First tell me. What are the advantages in being the son or the pap? Your papa is Dangote. <laughs> Your papa is Jehovah. Okay, which, which one? What, what, how, how do they compare? <laughs> Dangote is about to blow seriously. You know that he's. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's fertilizer. Is there a new contract for? Fertilizer, and you know, there's food shortages. So, if you are Dangote's child right now, hmm, in fact, <laughs> that's what I'm asking now. So, because we are talking about our birthright, uh, Sam says our birthright is that we are sons of God. And uh, a son of God, if he goes to a supermarket, 
And they say this one, this thing is costing was costing two thousand naira before. It's now ten thousand naira. Ah, uh, you cannot say, well, I'm a son of God. Where I bring it? <laughs> <laughs> But if his papa be Dangote, he can even give it to you on credit. They say, please, uh, Mr. Dangote, take it. We, you pay us, but we know, we know you bring the money. <laughs> you know, so there is, an, there is a supermarket advantage yes. to being Dangote's son. Uh, how does it compare to the advantage of being the son of God now? Because at a certain point, the advantage of being Dangote's son will disappear completely. It will no longer exist. So the advantage of being the son of God will continue. Hey, Amara, what, is the, what are the advantages? That, I suppose the idea is that you would ask him, be able to ask him for anything that you wanted. There would be no limitations. So you can ask Dangote now. Tell Dangote you want to go to uh, China tomorrow. You buy a ticket, give me a ticket. Tell him you want to buy a house in Dubai. Your phone is a uh, state agent. So yeah, look for a house for Amara. God does not work in that way. Okay, how does he work? What are the advantages that you have as a son of God, which you don't, which, which the son of Dangote doesn't have? In this life, things we want. There's one critical know. one, Amara, that we've been talking about again and again. A critical element mm, that Dangote doesn't have. Free that free. when he gets to that point, Dangote starts to look for the Amaras. What can it be? We don't have to be afraid of death. Okay, uh, in a way, number one, okay, Dangote does not have healing as a staple diet, okay? Whereas a child of God, healing is his bread or her bread as, as the case may be, as an example. But there are other, other advantages that we need to know about, okay? Now, Dangote, the son of Dangote, does not have love, does not have joy, does not have peace, does not have self-control, does not have, is not long-suffering. The, the fruit of the spirit are not available to the son of man, but they are available to the son of God. Okay. Um, Mr. Adeleke, you know, your, your papa is Adeleke, I mean. <laughs> <Hello, sir. laughs> huh? Oh, you don't belong to that Adeleke that I've been thinking about. <laughs> no, that one, that one is just a, uh, is just a uh, not uh, the, the real father is my only father. <laughs> Okay, how can, we, how can we show our pre preference for our soul? Hmm. How can we demonstrate our preference for the soul as opposed to just for the body? Because we know that uh, I, I, our soul, the first thing that we need to rec recognize about our soul is, uh, the, I think the soul also has to do with our conscience, which God puts there, you know, and as children of God, he's always speaking. And when he speaks, we listen to it because it, when he speaks, the Holy Spirit ministers to us through our soul. And when he speaks to us through our soul and we listen to it, by listening to it, it means that we communicate with him through our soul all the time. Not, not we are not a, we are not a natural man this time, you know. In in terms of correction, in terms of guidance, in terms of uh, direction, 
the Holy Spirit speaks to us through our soul, and it's very important for us to listen. Um, give you a subsidiary question. Okay, I agree with everything you said, uh, but the scripture presents it more cryptically. It says that we should be rich towards God, and it talks about a man who was rich in silver and gold, in naira and copper, in dollars and cents, but wasn't rich towards God. And that was his downfall. Now, uh, son of God, how can we be rich towards God? Well, the, uh, one of the ways at which you can be rich towards God is, is one by obeying his word, reading his words, reading his words, obeying his words, you know, and then also 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 being able to follow the precept which Jesus set for us by 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 standing in the gap for others, praying for the sick, you know, following his words, following his principle. You know, that is the only way that we can be rich. You forgot a, a very important element. Uh, by spending time with uh, him, by fellowshipping with him. Spending time. Okay. okay. That's correct, sir. Let me see. You are very good at uh, cooking. <laughs> well, it's you don't taste my food, though. Huh? I haven't tasted it yet, but one day I tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's a Imbo food now. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of food do people eat or that you would not eat? And why not? That I would not eat. Yes. What kind of food do people eat that I would not eat? You know some things that people eat that MC would never eat. Uh, what is this um, duck liver thing? Foie gras? Foie gras, what's wrong with foie gras? It's disgusting. <laughs> That's what's wrong with it. <laughs> will, you, will you eat frogs? If it's if it's cooked well, I would. I wouldn't. I would. If I'm if I'm hungry, I probably would eat anything. That's the. Will you eat a dog? Ah, that one will be hard. Maybe if I don't know it's dog. I know if I say <laughs> this is dog, <laughs> pepper pepper dog, will you eat it? I will pass. Thank you. So you know, I, I I've used that question to set you up. Why do we have? a high regard for our stomach? Because it's it's one of the few pleasures that don't doesn't have like, you know, a, a, a heavy price tag. So if, if, if people want to console themselves, they want to make themselves happy in some way. If they drink alcohol, there will be problem. If they smoke cigarette, there'll be problem. If they chase women, there'll be problem. But if they eat something, well, you know. And there's also something called gluttony. But that, that, that's, that's, that's not what I mean. I mean that, why is it that men are particular about what they eat? I think men are only particular about what they eat if they're privileged. That's just it. If you are hungry, you will eat whatever you see, even another human being. So, so I, I, I need the differentiation because uh, even poor people are particular about what they eat. They're not. Too. They are. There are so many people in Nigeria. I mean, you know, for instance, so many people in Lagos. Huh? I will not eat 
food from other lands. They will not. They just they won't eat it. They're not hungry. <laughs> mm. they be, because because of the regard that they have for their stomach. I was going to say that one of the advantages of being the child of God is that He allows you to hunger. He gives you the gift of hunger. You know, so uh, to answer your question. Yes, I, I'm, I'm actually going towards a differentiation, which is that while we have a high regard for our stomach, we don't usually have a correspondingly high regard for our soul. So there are so many things that we would not want to put in our stomach, but we are not that discriminating about what we put in our soul. Well, Samukwa says we can't really feel our soul. So it's not like if you're, you're, you can put your hand on your stomach and you can feel it rumbling. So your soul is something that you, you have to work hard to understand what is happening in it. It's easy to just ignore your soul until maybe you're on a deathbed or whatever. So the fact that you can actually do, you can do it for your whole lifetime and get away with it. That's, that's significant, I think. Yeah, but let, me, let, me, let me pose a question to you in this way. What are the ways by which a man, generically, that is a man or a woman can pollute his soul. By watching television. Why do you say that? Do you have a TV in your house? We don't actually. <laughs> but, but that's because someone broke it. But we don't have a TV. <laughs> we haven't had a, we haven't had a TV now for years. Who hmm? broke it? Ah, who else now? <laughs> and, and you didn't repair it. Ah, no, we didn't. We have, we don't. We, you don't watch TV. And okay, but you know because before, you know, it was you. It was from you that I had, which which sound sounded funny. Then when you told me, say, you had just gotten married. Then you say you don't want a TV in your bedroom. Yeah, um, um, and um, a lot of people like to have a TV in their bedroom because you just lie in bed and you're just changing channels like that. Like that. They're just going. Well, this this is the problem because okay. I mean, when you talk about guy, sort of um, what I found actually the way the Holy Spirit stopped me in my tracks with television is that I, I just I would watch TV and I would I could watch it easily for I could watch five films or three films in the past. But by the time I finished, I was depressed. So I, I just felt and I couldn't I couldn't really understand. <laughs> I, was, I was just any, any, any film at all. And I was already sort of very careful about because I don't like violence. I was very careful, but I just found that the Holy Spirit was offended with what I was watching. So I would I would start to feel very, very strange. And then I realized that he had a problem with me watching television. And I think what it is, is that it's, it's like your vision is very hard to man. So when you're watching something, it, it has direct entry into your soul. It's like music. But when you, um, I think when you're listening to things, your brain takes time to break the information down. So if you wanted to really pollute somebody's spirit, it would be through music, or through vis visual um, um, information, or and that's why the visual things that you use me, that you feel that pollutes the soul, apart from television. When I say the visual, the other things. I think violence pollutes the soul. I think. Did you? Um, did you? Well, we don't have a TV. Did you hear of Will Smith slapping? Um, uh, it was. 
I mean, with that, we've talked about nothing else all day. Um, rock. I think he, he, has, he has finished his, uh, his career. Uh, I'm very yes. sad. I feel so sad I'm for him. I'm so sorry for him. Yeah. Uh, they, they, Hollywood doesn't forgive those kinds of things, and they, the people who watch films too, they don't forgive. They don't forget this kind of kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what, what are the other things that we used to produce? To our stories? Well, definitely things like drugs. You know. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, like narcotics and heroin and all that. We 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 have a we we well there's something that happens in the house because if there's anger, if somebody's angry, it feels as if you a door opens. I always I've, I mean I've been saying this to the girls that you will just feel like it has come in. Yes. And <laughs> It's very scary the way it happens. And you think to yourself, okay, so can I not be angry? But I, 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 the more you, you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you just feel these things happening in your environment. You can, you can feel people themselves come in and they, they, are, they open doors with their presence because they're dabbling or all kinds of things. Okay, thank you. Barabbas. The resident lawyer. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, Balabash. What are some of the things that can pollute our soul? Our thoughts. Our what? what? Thought, thought. What we think yeah. about. What we think. Uh, what we fantasize about. Okay, what else? Um, our close family and friends, our colleagues, but sometimes the work we do can pollute our soul. Okay, what else? Um, there are some very obvious ones that are, you are going to, even more obscure ones that I was even to contest, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because. I don't think your family pollutes your soul, but anyway, you are. Uh, <laughs> Let me think about something. The things we read. Hmm? Music, yeah, true, true, true. Hmm? The magazines we read. Okay, they're all so pollutants. They provide soul poisoning. Yeah. What are some things that are pleasing to the body, but harmful to the body? Sorry. Sorry, say that again. What are some things that are pleasing to the body? but harmful yeah. to the body. Pleasing to the body and harmful to the body at the same time? Yes. Food. There are certain substances we take in as food that we enjoy them, but at the same time, they're harmful to our bodies. What kind of food is this? <laughs> Plenty of sugar. It's sweet, but it's, it's at the same time harmful to the body. Alcohol. Too much of red meat, according to the doctors. These are things that we take in that are very sweet to the body, but at the same time, they can be harmful to the body. What are some of those things that are pleasing to the body, mm -hmm. but harmful to the soul? Extramarital sex. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. Yeah. Okay. It's very pleasing to the body, but it brings about some kind of connections with some 
spirits that might not necessarily be from God, especially if the person is not uh, having such an activity with a spouse. The Bible says a man who commits adultery destroys his own soul. Anything else? Mm, this one came to my mind first. Um, mm, well, sin generally. Yeah, God. sin. Okay, yeah. Yes, it's on soul. But what else? Pleasurable mm. to the body, harmful to the soul. Hmm. But I think I think this has covered all of them. <laughs> Except that it might sound very gener general, but I think <laughs> it has covered basically all of them. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. Let's start. Yeah. Pastors, how can we safeguard the soul? By his um, feeding, it's constantly feeding ourselves. By feeding ourselves. I don't know what you're saying. I don't understand what you're saying. Huh? So if we sit down to a plate of pandan yam, uh, the soul will be safe. By having a constant relationship. Pardon? I say, how can we say by having cost we say we should feed ourselves? Yeah, that is uh, having the constant relationship with God. Is that it? Uh, yes, because with that, uh, it's, uh, you distance yourself from other things that are palatable to, to destroy the soul. So you will have much more time, able to study more time. Okay, all right. Thank so you. If uh, we say it, How can we save God the soul? How can we save God the soul? But um, study the word of God. Study the word of God. Can a man live without bread? Man cannot live without bread. Man can live without bread. It's bread that gives life. It's bread that gives life. It's bread that gives life. Yes. Not, 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 not grass, <laughs> the, the scripture says man doesn't live by bread enough. Yeah. Man, <laughs> can a man yeah. live without bread? Man cannot do that bread alone. Okay, uh, man, let me let me ask somebody else. Uh, Samukwa, can a man live without bread? Uh, uh, no, the, I, the scripture does not say that man does not live by bread. He says man does not live by bread alone, which means that bread is part of the requirement, you know? But it is not a man cannot live without bread. In its in its bread. But how how did the Israelites live for forty years without bread? I assumed that when you said bread, you meant anything to eat, well, not specifically. I, I, I meant you know I meant food. Food. Yes. Yeah, well, manna was their food. 
Yes, but manna is not <laughs> manna is not food. What do they call it food? You know what manna what manna means? Manna That's means what, what is it? Yeah, but but it was it was edible. Yes, but it isn't food. That's what they ate. It, it wasn't food. God, but that was enough. That was God's God's own. That was God's own. No, no, no. Hold on. The people wanted food, and God decided not to give them food. He decided to give them manna instead. So let me ask you a subsidiary question before I go to Benedict, who is raising up his hand, even though I, well, I was just with him a moment ago. Sam, can okay. a man live with only the word of God? Let me say that. Let me say that. I want to believe that it is possible. You want to believe that it's possible, but you don't believe that it is possible. You just want to believe. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, why I say why I use that expression is because I have I have actually seen a video somewhere of a man who lived an old man who lived for so many years with no food. He was only drinking water. And how he, you know, he, how he survived this was a, was a story for another day. But if that can happen with somebody who is not even, it's not, on, it's not even on account of uh, 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 feeding on the word of God, then it makes me believe that it is possible. The God of, with the, with um, the um, word of God um, and... Um, and what are have you ever lived without food? Ah, the <laughs> I, I at some point, yes. I because, because I remember very clear. You have contradicted yourself very, very well. You have contradicted, eh? you have contradicted yourself in a beautiful way. Have you ever gone on a three-day fast without food and water before? Yes. Did you die? No, I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now you know some people. Some people go on a fast. They call it fasting, but they are really just they are really just punishing themselves because <laughs> they are not they are not they are not eating the word. You 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 don't you don't you don't fast food and not put another food in its place in, the, in, the, in its place. So some people yes. they just suffer themselves no hunger for nothing. That is a forty days and forty nights without food. He did not die. He didn't die. Abby. He, he, he didn't die. Uh, no, he didn't. Thank you, Sam. Let's let's see what uh, what uh, Benedict wants to disturb us about. Yeah, Benedict, over to you. Um, I, I think I, the question said, I can man live um, without bread. Um, I wish I believe that Jesus said, um, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that came from the mouth of God. I mean, that, um, you need both of them. What did he mean by saying that? You mean that? What did he say? Man doesn't live by bread alone. But by the word that came out of the mouth of God, yes. means that um, you need the word of God to be alive. So what, what does it mean by the first part of the sentence? Man doesn't live by bread alone. Let me, I think we, we, man does not live by bread. It means that man has been living by bread before. And then Jesus came and said, you don't need much of this food you are eating, but you need this word of God to be alive. Does the second, that, part, does the second part of the statement imply that man doesn't need bread? No. Every word that comes proceeds from the mouth of God. The second part, what it means that 
Does the second part me, not contradict the first part? No, it doesn't contradict each other. Don't be so fast to answer questions. You know, think a little bit before you answer, because I'm not so stupid as to ask you a stupid question. Okay. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now take the first yeah. part out. Jesus says, man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right? Does that include yes. bread? Okay, just let's, take, just let's take the second part alone. Man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Does that include bread? No. Okay, so the second part contradicts the first. Because the first part says he doesn't live by bread alone. But the second part says he doesn't need bread. Yes, yes, yes. I understand the question now. I understand the question now. So why does he express it in that in those in that in a seemingly contradictory fashion? I um, I think because they want um we to know that what you challenge needs to be alive, what you we need to be alive is the word of God, not the physical bread that we eat, because we believe in men as men as believers for you to be alive, you need a physical bread. But Jesus has come now and said that the life that he's talking about that, that you that he came to give what you need to sustain that life with is the word of God, not physical bread. Okay, so let, let us break down what you have said, maybe with, with your permission. Okay, Jesus says that. In the flesh, man lives by bread. Hmm? Okay, but even there, not by bread alone. But in the other one, it's talking about spiritual life now. So yes. one, one is talking about animal life, the other one is talking about spiritual life. Uh, animal life, we don't even live by bread alone because there are so many people that only live by bread and they think that because they have bread, they are alive. Okay. But with spiritual life, all you need is the word of God. Word of God, yes. Uh, to get it. So let me rephrase the question and see if you will help me with it. What does the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy? What does it come to steal and to destroy? Um, I think it's spiritual life. You have to explain what you answer to me. Um, because um, the thief does not need my phone, need anything that has to do with my physicality. Well, he doesn't need anything about your life anyway. What does he need? Because they're not, because they're not important to God. What he knows that is what has God is spiritual life, that's my soul. And he's going to do everything possible to, to even though he cannot arm it, or we try, it means that it will be, I don't know how to put it, to we try to make, make sure that he, he stop everything by trying okay. to kill it. Okay, okay, all right, all right, let's, 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 let's run out of time. Uh, um, um, doctor, how can the thief steal your spiritual life? How can he kill your uh, By making sure that yeah, they're moving. Yeah, the, uh, one of the ways he can kill a spiritual life is to make sure that we are distracted by, 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 by everything that happened in the world. We're distracted by so many other things, by not making us to be, to be, uh, to have time to praise God, to have time to to to, to worship God at the right time, that worship God, bringing, giving us different kind of excuses. For instance, when there is no nepa, when they take nepa, and somebody is complaining that there is no nepa, they cannot worship God. They say sleep off. That is excuse, excuse. And number two, sometimes when they say the heat is too much, because heat is too much, you cannot worship God. No, all sorts of excuses that the devil will bring in. These are not these are excuses which we, we allow it. Because we are talking too fast. Huh? Conversations. Is it only water? That he has come. He has come to, to, to has come to kill. 
No, it's not. No, I'm, I'm just saying that there's a lot, there are a lot of things, things that. Be quiet. Stop listening. What are the other things that he has come to kill, steal, and destroy? You only mention worship. Yeah, it's to 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 make sure that we we are discouraged when when, for instance, when we are praying, looking, waiting. The same thing. This pattern is. Then some sometimes sometimes it creates fear. Fear. Fear also is one of the one of the tools that he also use he uses uses for us at, at times. The fear, you know? the, fear, the fear kills our spiritual life. Okay, when, yeah. it, when it creates fears in us, to make us to fear as if God does, and, and it, 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 it becomes a uh, kind of life. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, Barnabas, please. What are the ways by which the devil steals our spiritual life? Just list them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have Barnabas, 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 it never takes you this long to, to turn on your mic. Sorry, I, I'm struggling with this. Apologies. Please take the question again. What are the ways by which the devil makes us try to steal our spiritual life? Number one. I'm, I'm really struggling to hear you. I'm okay. sorry. I didn't, I didn't get the... Uh, okay. I'm let me, let me go to someone else because we are running out of time. Okay, it's all right. Uh, if I will listen, are you here? Yes, sir, I'm here. What are the ways by which the devil steals, kills, and destroys our spiritual life? Uh, number one, it takes away our peace. Takes away our what? Uh, our peace, 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 peace. Takes away our peace. How does it take away our peace? Well, by making us focus on, on things that, uh, like for example, it makes us even doubt the voice of God. As case, we're on the word of God. That way, the peace that comes from God is taken away from us. Now, that is one way that I see that we, we come to steal. Hello? I said that is the one way that you know. Yeah, the second way that, that I also, is it, it falls, it, uh, uh, pushes us to fall into temptation. Uh, that is one way that we have to definitely destroy our spiritual life because of it. It's the tempter, so it takes us in that regard, and that's which uh, it's the second way that I understand. Yes. yes. What are some of the ways by which the devil steals our spiritual life? By giving us so many things to worry about, so it steals our peace. Okay. What else? By distracting us with so many unnecessary things, so it steals our time and does not allow us to engage in more fruitful activities. What are these activities that prevent us from engaging in? Well, when we are so distracted, time goes, and that is a time that could be useful in spending time with God, in reading the word, in <clears throat> in uh, feeding our minds, you know, with things that have to do with God to discover more things about how, how, to, how to be a better child of God. Because it, all these things require time because we have to learn these things. Children do not just, are not just born and they know everything. They learn things. So we too, as children of God, there are things we need to be learning as we progress. 
And these things require time. So when we start seeing all kinds of distractions, it's a sure way of wasting our time that we could have used better. It also <clears throat> creates problems by, sorry? Go on, go on, go on. Uh -huh. It also creates problems for our spiritual life by, by creating fear, fear of, fear of, fear of death, fear of, uh, uh, um, um, fear of sickness. So all this fear begins to make us sometimes, when people have fears like this, you be, in, that, uh, in that kind of situation, you start forgetting the words of the Lord that you must have known before. And sometimes some people panic and start running from pillar to post. So, you know, that begins to affect you spiritually. And sometimes you even begin to doubt. Your faith now starts wavering, you know. And he also has this, uh, uh, he has this way that he goes about feeding you with all kinds of ideas of things that makes it look so attractive to you, things that you're not supposed to be doing. He'll give you an idea, get you involved in things that are not constructive. You get involved in arguments. And this is one of the things that I was thinking of when you were asking about what things can pollute you know, our souls. You get involved in arguments and, and anger and uh, resentment begins to build up in your, in your spirit. It is you that is being affected and all those things. So these are some of the ways in which, you know, he, he goes about trying to destabilize us. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, it seems, well, 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 you know, you, you told us quite a few, uh, but uh, I, I detect a little bit of struggle with, with quite a few of us, which is perhaps why we're talking about this. Straightforward. We said before, in an earlier discussion, prodigal son died when he left the father. Okay, so the life was with the father. So if he is not with the father, uh, he's dead. Okay, so he is going to make sure that the things that bring us to the father, we're not doing them. What are the things that give us life? Number one, reading the word. Didn't hear it from people. Huh? You are not fed. You're going to die. If you are not fed, you will die. Number two, spending time in prayer. Hmm? If you stand near the fire, you will be warm. If you get close to God, you will receive life. The life is in God, not in man. So man has to come to God to receive life. Uh, you are not living a fasted life. Okay? He will assure that you will tell yourself, you cannot fast. You cannot fast. Somebody was talking television. You cannot fast. Some of these, you hear music that the people have always come, come below, come below, or whatever it is that they sing, all kinds of uh, what they call rap music now, that they're just swearing, they're making all kinds of listening about it. Uh, you cannot fast some of these news that people are having because of, you know, the bad news is the good news. If you watch any of these news broadcasts, most of what they will tell you about are things that are bad. Uh, so he will get you to fill your heart with all kinds of rubbish. Sometimes, that's why we're talking about pollutants, uh, pornography. Uh, all of these things are in the world now, okay? You will play video games until you get tired. Hmm? You will you will go you will you will surf the net, ah, uh, and like 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 everything in Facebook. Oh, you are wasting your life. You will you will you will uh, uh, do TikTok. Ah, uh, I was at a restaurant yesterday, and there was there was there was two ladies. They must have taken at least two hundred photographs. Uh, I knew that it's going to end up on Instagram. That is their own. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of things that the devil is going to just make us do. Uh, not only that, some people, he is going to enrich them. Hmm? They will be very rich and their riches will deceive them, okay? Because they will tell them that they have all they need 
tells them they don't need God, they can buy anything, the money killer, all of these things are the things that we must be aware of. We must beware of these things. Let me see. Can a dead man sing and dance? Can a dead man sing and dance? Yes, he can. Explain how. Ah, he can, he can, like have, you said, ever like, seen a, have you ever seen a dead man singing and dancing? Yes, plenty of them in the nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Have you ever seen them dancing in the church? I've yeah. seen dead men dancing in the church before. God opened my eyes to see. Okay, they were not dead. They were, they were skeletons. They were dying of kwashioka, but they were, <laughs> they, 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 they were dead. Hmm? Now, let me see. How can a man and a woman become one flesh? Oh, good question. I don't know. <laughs> How? Let's, let's address this very quickly. Huh? A man and a woman become one flesh through sex. Okay. Once you join yourself, that if you join yourself to a prostitute, you are one flesh with a prostitute. Okay? In fact, you know, in, 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 in God's uh, uh, terminology, you are, you are one with the prostitutes. Um, you are married to the, you are, you are married to the prostitute. Huh? And one other question I was going to ask, because I'm running out of time, is why would a man have sex with a prostitute or refuse to kiss the prostitute? This is part of the, the, the confusion that the devil has brought. Okay? That's why I say that, you know, preference for that which is irrelevant to that which is relevant. In fact, you, you find that you people don't catch AIDS by kissing, but they catch AIDS through sex because sex there is a chemistry that takes place with sex where blood is intermingled and all kinds of things pass through, demons pass through. All you know, I mean, uh, the people have been infected by demons through sex. It, don't, it doesn't happen because you just shook hands with somebody. Jesus says that it is that which comes out of a mouth, not that which goes into, not that which goes into his, his, his stomach. Now, my last Are question. You, know you can't catch demons by kissing somebody. You know, you can't, you can't catch demons by kissing somebody. How can you catch demons? Depends on the kiss, so. <laughs> you know, unless you exchange bodily fluids, um, all kinds of things, all kinds of things happen when you exchange bodily fluids. Okay, but even then, you know, I mean, as some of these diseases are not translated in that manner, and some of these spiritual trans transmissions don't happen that manner. Now, the question I was going to ask is that: Does a man die when his body dies? No. When his body dies. It is the body that dies. The man is not dead. That is part of a critical element of the ministry of Jesus. He's come to expose the lie of death, that which man calls death, Jesus calls sleep. And it demonstrates it. Talita Kumi, the girl, stands up. Huh? Demonstrates it. Lazarus comfort. Lazarus came out of the grave. He demonstrated it with himself. He died. And then he rose from the dead. So here we see, why is it that Christians have a problem with somebody in their family dying, but Muslims don't? And we are the ones that have a savior who exposed yeah. death and rose from the dead. I don't think that Muslims don't have a problem. They just have a culture of they don't have a problem with it. The people I know have a problem with it, but the, their culture is 
deal with it very quickly. So they just put the person inside the ground. And that's I it. So, hmm? And that's it. Yeah. But, but prisoners are different. Prisoners want to, they want to jump inside the grave. <laughs> they have a, they have a, a full-blown ceremony, you know. So they don't reconcile quickly with the idea of the body is gone. They, is it not that the, 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 the faith where the founder raises the dead and rose from the dead still has a problem <laughs> with death? Yeah. And the faith where the founder is dead, they don't. This is kingdom dynamics. Let me see, pray with us. Let us close this meeting. Father Lord, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your presence. Help us to desire what you desire for us and to understand all that you have given us, all that is ours, the, your riches in glory. Help us to embrace everything that you've you, you died to give us. Open the eyes of our understanding and help us to retain and not forget what it is that we have learned. Go with um, each of us and uh, your spirit, Holy Spirit, abide with all of us and bring us back again on Thursday. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Say for the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye, valuable loss. We are the apple of God's eyes, everybody, doctor, valuable loss. We are the apple of God's eyes, doctor. Sam. Adeleke, Festus. Adeleke, Festus. My, my brilliant friend.